We'll stay in Sydney now because joining us is the former ambassador to Israel, Dave Sharma. Dave, uh, good as always to see you. Um, since we last spoke a bit over a week ago, what, what do you make of the government and in particular the Prime Minister's response to Israel's response? Well, look, I'd say... Peter, that I think there have been unfortunate breakouts of bipartisanship here in support of Israel. We've seen the, the Labor front bench sending all sorts of messages, I think, about this. I think the Prime Minister is still yet to call, yet to speak with Prime Minister Netanyahu, his Israeli counterpart, almost two weeks after this event has happened. In that time, we've seen the US President visit Israel, the UK Prime Minister visit Israel, the German Chancellor visit Israel, the EU Commission President visit Israel, but Anthony Albanese hasn't even been able to speak to Netanyahu yet. Uh, I just think they're, unfortunately, horribly conflicted on this. They don't actually... They're not full-throated in their support of Israel's mm. right to defend itself, and I think that's regrettable. This is a country with whom we share deep historical and values ties uh, with a sizable community. L let me just make this point. Just because you support Israel's right to defend itself does not mean you need to be anti-Palestinian. You can support a Palestinian national cause and a movement, and but you don't need to support terrorism, and you don't need to support Hamas, and you need to come out forcefully and condemn that. So you think Anthony Albanese should be, should be going to Israel as soon as he can? Absolutely, I think he should be going as soon as he can. And I would say as well he should also visit Ramallah on the same trip and go and meet with the legitimate authority of the Palestinian people, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority. Because, look, this conflict has a long way to play out, unfortunately. Mm. There are grave risks to regional stability and, and security. And as Australia's history tells us, when conflict breaks out in the Middle East, uh, we are inevitably impacted and we inevitably become involved. And I'm certain when Anthony Albanese is in Washington later this week, this topic will be high up on the list of... Uh, items discussed yeah. and I quite expect that there will at least be some expectation that Australia supports US stabilisation efforts in the region. Well, I mean, the Dutch Prime Minister, uh, the French um, President uh, Emmanuel Macron, they're all going this week. Realistically, though, I mean, I, mean, I suppose um, the leader of Australia might be a few rungs down when it comes to Benjamin Netanyahu's list of priorities, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Dave, but what, what, can, what can Anthony Albanese legitimately offer by, by going to Israel? Well, I think it's an important sign of, firstly, diplomatic support to Israel after it's suffered its... This is th yeah. the worst attack that it's ever suffered in its modern-day history. It's like 12 September the 11th happening in one single day for Israel. But also it's an important warning to the region and to actors in the region, like Hezbollah, like Iran, like the Houthi rebels in Yemen, uh, mm. like groups like Palestinian Islamic Jihad and other terrorist groups, that Australia is watching. Australia will have Israel's back and Australia will support Israel's right to defend itself. And, you know, you, you rattled off all these leaders who've already visited. I can tell you that a visit by an Australian Prime Minister would be welcome and the lack of contact to date from Australia and from this Prime Minister has been noticed in Israel. Hmm. You just brought up a few places there and there were these strikes on the West Bank, strikes in Syria, strike in, strikes in Lebanon. You've had strikes from Yemen the other day involving the US Navy. How precarious is this moment at the moment, Dave, and, and the risk of it spreading into a much broader conflict? I think it's very precarious. I think it's um, at least over the last three to four decades, this is probably the most dangerous moment we've seen in the Middle East. I think there is a very real risk that this conflict spreads. We've already seen an uptick in militant and terrorist activity in, in southern Lebanon, where Hezbollah is, in the West Bank, where groups like Palestinian Islamic Jihad are. We've seen Iran issue threats and ultimatums to Israel, saying not to go ahead with this ground offensive in Gaza. As you said, uh, part of a, a US carrier strike group shot down cruise missiles and drones that were fired by the Houthis in Yemen, mm. supposedly destined for Israel. Um, there's a very real risk that this, this gets a lot worse. And I, I would say as well, Israel is yet to properly begin its ground offensive yeah. of, of Gaza. That tensions are going to rise considerably higher once that gets underway. So what's the circuit breaker in all of this? Well, I think the circuit breaker, um, it's, it's partly making sure humanitarian assistance gets into Gaza, and I'm glad to see that's now flowing through Egypt's border crossing. Um, it's partly trying to make sure that 
Arab states in the region uh, and neighbours do what they can to quell militants within their own borders, but also make quite clear that whilst they support the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people, they do not support the tactics or the objectives of the terrorist group Hamas. Uh, and I think that's key to all this. So countries like Egypt, countries like Jordan, um, countries like Lebanon, countries like Turkey, all of whom Australia has a good relationship with. Mm. Those are the sorts of messages we need to be delivering to them okay. right now. Uh, I've just got to ask you finally here, Dave, because, um, you know, when you were in government, we, we spoke about the Port of Darwin a lot. Now, in the Friday night trash, um, I guess the, the status quo <laughs> remains. There will be no changes when it comes to that. What do you, what do you think of that decision? Well, I think it's staggering, and I think um, particularly as Anthony Albanese, as the opposition leader, described the, the first issuing of the lease as a grave error of judgment when it was done. Um, I think it was right to review this. We've strengthened the Foreign Investment Review Act since that lease was issued to make sure that this loophole was closed. I was in Parliament. I voted for that. Mm. Um, and I think it... it would make sense to anyone who follows Australia's defence or national security to know that we need to have expanded facilities and hardened infrastructure in places like Darwin. And when you've got this land bridge lease to a predominantly overseas controlled company, um, it poses a risk to Australia's national security, plain and simple. Uh, the lease should have been cancelled um, and Anthony Albanese and or his senior ministers should have had the courage to front the media and explain this decision rather than it coming out in an unauthored press release late on a Friday afternoon yeah. from Anthony Albanese's department. The Friday night trash, they call that. Uh, Dave Sharma, I appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again soon.